Oh my goodness, I started early. Hello, it's me, Scott. How are you today? I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. Um, hello. What are we going to do today? Well, I thought today, I've been thinking a little bit about a certain project. And, uh, well, really about a lot of certain projects. But let's just, let's just go over here and look at some stuff. First, let's look at this thing. Look at that. I don't know about this wallpaper. I kind of like it. <clears throat> but that must have been messed with, right? Unless we were in the ocean in Norway? I don't know. I'm gonna find the right wallpaper. That's obviously the key. Mm hmm. This place again. Never noticed those little waterfalls before. That's nice. It's kind of nice. Let's go with this for now. Okay, so. <clears throat> on uh, the residency. We'll talk more about what's going on with that thing tomorrow, I think. I think. But uh, at the moment, I want to talk about Pinterest. Pinter Pinterest? Pinterest. And I want to talk about... Oh, man, this is cool stuff again. We're going to get distracted again, aren't we? Maybe later. Okay. Let's just get... Just for a second, get distracted. Oh, look at that keyboard. Look at this thing. What is this thing? I don't even know. Look at that thing. Beautiful laser cut paper. Paintings by entomology. Oh, bugs. Got some bugs. Oh yeah, I forgot to do a thing. Sorry. Let me do a thing. And then we will we'll continue to look at Pinterest. Ah. Look at this. Look at that thing. Beautiful. Oh, manhole covers. How have I not thought about beautiful manhole covers in this whole thing? Oh. Okay, this is important. <clears throat> okay, wait, though. I gotta do the thing that I need to do. Mm -hmm. This and this and push that button and uh, it's all good. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about these beautiful Japanese manhole covers. Train covers. Those are good. So lovely. Those two, are those ninjas? Oh. Friend, it's a nice friend there. Okay, very much into these. We're getting too distracted. That's not possible. We're, we're getting the right amount of distracted, I think. You gotta have input to make output. I feel like that's kind of a problem I've been having lately. Is like, you know, being kind of locked away. The input to output ratio. The input goes down, the output goes down. That's just how it is for me. Oh, look at that thing. What's this thing? What are these keyboards? Okay, but these are actually, these are what I want to look at. These kind of tangible interfaces. Because I've been thinking about them. And I was thinking in particular about one example that we saw that was um, here. This. I've seen a fair number of these, like, uh, oh man, look at these things. Okay, <laughs> hang on. Just a little distracted here. I love it. Look at those colors. Everything about that is amazing. Okay. Uh, beautiful. Yes. So these kind of smart tables, these tangible tables that you put objects on and you mess with the objects and you do object stuff. Um, I've seen some, there's some cool sound ones. They're pretty neat. And they do some pretty cool stuff. Um, I can't actually remember if I've ever encountered one in person. But it's a thing I've seen a fair amount of. Uh, and sometimes they're just like a, a, a way to add some... Like in this case, it looks like it's just choosing an option here. So you put it on this little reader. And then you get some some new information. So in that case, they're, they're relatively passive. 
passive in that they just have to be there or not be there, right? You just put it on the thing. I would, I would maybe assume that's RFID. I don't know that, but I would maybe assume it is this thing. If you look at it, <clears throat> I kind of imagine you drop a thing on here and you get some data up there. So that's, there's something to that. I mean, it at least makes your interface a little bit tangible. But what I'm more thinking about is uh, these kinds of things. I don't know, is this the one, one of the original ones? I'm not sure. You see a fair number of them. You see them often with this kind of business where they are um, on, a, on a rear projected table. So there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot of them. Um, or you see them where they're this kind of business and they're tracked and uh, it's like a proje projection mapping thing. You see that as well, um, <clears throat> which is pretty cool. These are all cool things. But in, in all of these, in, in, in these instances at least that we're looking at where they're, they're kind of active in that you can move them and position in them and they actually matter. It's not just that they're there, it's where they are, potentially how they're oriented, things like that, especially those knobs. When it's a knob that gets turned, it's not just position, it's also rotation that matters. So there's there's something to that. And the, But this one thing in particular that came up on our, got lost again. <laughs> okay, so I, <clears throat> but I don't know. I don't know if I want to do rear projection for a million reasons. Uh, but then I saw this project and it is, it's interesting because it's it's like there's things that I like about it and there's things I'm not crazy about. But basically, you have a surface upon which you place these objects. In this case, they're blocks, and those blocks have um, AR markers on them. Fiduci fiducial fiducial markers. I feel like I always say that word incorrectly. Fiducial just means point, like kind of like a in this context, like a point of reference so you can understand where something is and how it's positioned. So with computer vision, and actually at the bottom of this enclosure, there's just a camera pointing up. And so you throw these on and the camera looks up and it sees these markers and it can tell which ones are facing down and it can uh, tell you about where they're positioned in space and it can tell you their orientation. It can tell you a fair amount of information about that thing. Uh, in this case, so normally it would tell you all the things you want to know. You want to know the position, you want to know the rotation, you want to know the scale. Scale being a large indicator of how far or near something is, because a lot of these are used for spatial tracking, like AR, you know, you've probably seen AR marker tracking kind of stuff. These, these, the scale is relevant because it's on a surface, so it'll be at a fixed distance from the camera. I mean, maybe that's how you know that they're actually where you want them to be, maybe. Um, so the idea with this table is you, you throw these down, and based on wherever they're positioned, you saw that tree, so that one was a tree, and this one is a little patch of grass with animals, and it can be kind of positioned and rotated. And so you have a tangible object that has a direct connection to a, a virtual object, essentially. And it's, it's pretty neat. There's things about it that are a little like, yeah, that, that, okay, so then you have some objects that are about control. So this object is about um, camera control. So it, it it's a certain, I don't know what this one is. Let's zoom, unclear or like an orbit kind of thing. So some objects are about placing things. So that one was about whether it's night or day. So it's this interesting thing where they've created kind of a parametric system in these different, uh, these different pieces have kind of a different language. And some of them are literal, like, I think all of these up here, you can see, you can't see my cursor at all. Oh, this was a bad, I did a bad job of showing you this. The, uh, everything I'm pointing at is, is here on this little space where they're dropping things down kind of on a tray. Maybe I'll turn me off for a second and then forget to turn me on ever again. Uh, so like with the camera moves and things like that, there, or, or changing the weather you saw, this person rolled it and a new space was exposed and that was presumably the fog space. So I think this is pretty cool. And I think it's an interesting, I think it's an interesting use case for it. Kind of, maybe kind of an unusual use case for it, but I do like it. And, and, 
And I also like, I like that there's a variety of options for what things do and what they mean. So like these, I think it's these green ones, correspond directly to these little physical islands or these little virtual islands. And as this person rotates and moves them, those things rotate and move. So those are, those are all about me having a meaning. They have a meaning uh, with the in the virtual space. But there's also some, and now that my face is not in the way that you'll hopefully be able to see, that are not that. That are, so these red ones maybe are animals, little animal dens or something based on the face. So green seems to be plant life. These red ones seem to be animals. But there's others, uh, let's get back to that part, hopefully. So these, maybe they're blue. Is this, this space is about, this object is about camera control. And by flipping it around, it's changing what the camera's doing. So th it, it's no longer about, you know, a one-to-one -one correlation between a thing in the virtual world and a thing in the real world. It's now about, okay, I'm able to kind of positionally uh, make decisions about something, make, make, make choices. Um, this one has seemingly no positional information. It only, you only care what face it's on and that's how you change the weather. So I think that's pretty cool. I think it, is there's some things I don't quite understand. Like, is there only one camera control? Is there only one weather control? Like how, how exactly did they come up with that? Like that vocabulary of objects um, is maybe a way to put it. And I don't, uh, I don't speak the language that this project is documented in. So I can't, uh, they may be telling me some of those things about how those choices were made and what they mean. Um, there's some pretty interesting things though. Like looking down in here, you can't even really see that camera. I need to turn my face off again. And I'm curious about how they managed that. Like how did they get a clear enough picture of the marker, but also managed to kind of obscure the camera? I, th I thought that was kind of a cool thing. And of course this could work with the camera facing down as well. The camera doesn't have to face up, but I did think, I thought that was a pretty nice touch that they were able to sort of make it look like it was a, a light table essentially, when you look into it, but when, uh, but, but the computer vision is still working in whatever way. And I'm not sure how they do that. Maybe there's like one way mirrored acrylic or something. I, I don't exactly know, but it's, I thought it was pretty cool. So well, it must not be a mirror because you would see, you'd see the backside of things. So it's probably not a mirror, whatever it is. Uh, so, some sort of one way, uh, one way material that's not a mirror. I don't know what that means. So. So how does this work? There's these again are fiducial markers on here and there's some kind of computer vision system. And I expect there's just some kind of webcam or webcam ish thing that looks up and it looks for these things and it tells the software some information about those, like where they are on the screen, where they are in some space, some field of play and what their orientation is. <clears throat> and what, the, what they are. So basically the contents of the, yeah, the contents of them and uh, the position of them and the orientation of them would be maybe the, the three big pieces you get from this. And we don't care so much about scale or position in space because it's, again, kind of a fixed distance. We just care where it is. It's kind of a 2D experience, I guess, is how you would put that. So I think that's pretty cool. And I've done a fair amount of AR-ish stuff in the past, and I've done AR-ish stuff with markers of various kinds. And broadly, the world's kind of moving away from that, right? Like when you, when you talk about AR kit or AR core, they still can do image-based experiences, certainly, and various other AR systems do that. But, but more and more, it seems like the trend is moving towards, well, you just point at a flat surface and the thing can happen there. Or at least that seemed to be the big promise of AR kit and AR core. I don't, I don't know if that's like, I don't know, we, we, we still haven't, really found out if that's like the way or not the way. But I will say like custom fiducial markers seem a little less common to me. It seems more common to do just sort of AR based on detecting a surface or AR based on an image, like some image content that is not a fiducial marker. It's a, it's a logo or a photograph or whatever, whatever, whatever. So anyway, I've just been thinking about this a little bit and wondering if there's something we can do with it. Like if there's something Yeah, just kind of wondering what, what what could we do with this? What 
what could we learn from this? And it's a little weird because there's lots of reasons this doesn't really adapt to the things we've been doing, particularly because we're thinking so much in kind of radial symmetry and polar coordinates and so on. And so it doesn't, the, the one-to-one -one spatial mapping that you see here is not, uh, d doesn't strike me as like immediately the correct thing to do. Uh, but you can still have these things where you, you sort of place a single object, you know, you place a single thing and turn it. I assume that's going on here. I actually don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on with a lot of these exhibits, but it looks like this person has put a thing down and then is doing stuff to it. Or right here, you can very, very clearly see the fiducial markers. So I don't know quite what to, to think about that. Um, the stuff on the screen is pretty cool, but again, we're like, we, we hmm. a lot of the stuff we've been doing is about radial symmetry and about radial symmetry that emerges from a single point of interaction. Like a single touch would make radial symmetry or placing a few objects creates radial symmetry. So we wouldn't want you to have to create your own radial symmetry with these. Um, so I don't know actually if I would even want the on surface things. I, I, I don't know. The, uh, well, well, we'll talk about it more tomorrow about kind of the state of the project and what I'm thinking of and where I'm going with it. But so there's lots of these kinds of things and they're cool. This I think is a relatively early one. I, the, a, a lot of sort of experimental music interfaces were done in this way, which I think those are cool. And you can see that it seems to be a fair number of those examples work that way. Uh, this is not one of those things at all. So anyway, the thing I was just thinking about is is kind of imagining I get, the thing I got from this project was like, well, that's kind of cool. You can do this same thing and you don't necessarily have to do it on a screen or under a projector. Like it could still potentially be satisfying to have a play space, whatever that space is that you're operating in. And uh, build things from there. And I don't know what that means, to be totally honest with you. I don't, I, I mean, I don't know what the... Uh, what the execution exactly is, but I can kind of imagine some. I can kind of imagine some some ways to interact with that that still let us do the things we want to do in the way that we do them. Uh, yeah, all these, I don't, I, I, yeah, projection, I just don't know. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Well, these friends. That looked fun, what were they doing? I got a big table. Social challenges. But okay, so this is not too far from what I'm kind of imagining, just in terms of, I mean, not the content of it at all, because I don't really know what's going on here. But just maybe this is one version of this. There's a big screen in the middle or a big area in the middle, and then you have your little area on the outside. And in this case, it looks like their little areas are touch screens but maybe what I'm imagining is that they're not, that they are some computer vision thing that isn't a screen. I've probably over explained this at this point, but I'm, I'm forgive me for that, but I'm still kind of uh, digesting it. I'm still trying to think about ways that it could be interesting to use uh, this kind of stuff, you know? Uh, because I think I had that meeting with the Children's Museum this morning that we'll summarize tomorrow, but the, one of the things that came from it is I think in the world of what I like to do and the things that I like to make, especially in music type stuff, it's been build a framework in which someone can create something and feel like it's music. Like they can do stuff and on the other side of it's like, oh, that's kind of musical, even if they don't know anything about music. And I, there's still some chance that I will decide like that's the thing to do, that it's like, nope, this thing should be noisy. Uh, but at the moment, it's about creating these radial patterns and these radial compositions and these radial forms. And the idea would be to give you, give, give, give the visitor a system by which they could sit down and they could play with this and they would feel like they had agency because they would. They would have agency to, to do the thing, whatever the thing is, whether it's pick up these objects and move them around or whatever, and come out with a a result that they felt ownership over, like that they, they, they had some ownership over and they create, like they created something. And so that's really important to me, but 
I still, uh, and again, maybe this is all just me working in isolation, slightly moving, losing my mind, but it, it still hasn't solidified yet into like the idea. Um, these all projecting tables. Cool. So I think I like I like I like gathering around a thing. That still stands. I like these radio patterns, that still stands, but I'm unfortunately still not super close to the uh So here's more music. This one has a little radio pattern, so that's kind of interesting. Very clearly trackable pattern. So I believe this uses um Judging by these particular patterns, I don't know this. I don't know the name of these particular patterns, but I've seen them before used with a, a particular platform for this stuff. I think it's called... I can't remember. Re it's something like reactive. It's something like react reactable. Yes. Rotor. They have a new one. So, okay. I associate those particular markers with this with this particular outfit. Um, how did they do this? Interesting. Tangible on an iPad. That must work some capacitive way. In fact, I think I've seen that. Now that I say that, I have seen that. I hadn't thought of that, but that's interesting. So you could do this on a touch screen as well. Uh, with, with, if it's a capacitive touch screen, you basically make objects that present, they essentially present what looks like a touch pattern to the screen, like there's fingers touching there. So that's actually interesting because I hadn't considered that. The, the downside of it is that I think you're kind of limited to the number of inputs because these displays only support support a certain number of uh, touches. And so, and it, and it takes several touches. In fact, and now that I say this, I remember someone I went to grad school with made this with uh, something not unlike this with Play-Doh where the Play-Doh was the kind of capacitive medium that would touch multiple points and you would detect those patterns. So, interesting. Something to consider. I don't, that doesn't immediately solve problems, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, so these, they, they've kind of productized this. But that's, that's pretty cool. I'm actually... Pretty interested in that. Very expressive person. But I do have to kind of imagine that like, I mean, I don't know, gosh, I don't know. Does this really offer anything? Just in terms of it's, it's some objects that you stick on your iPad screen. And I don't know that those are a better way to interact with something on a screen. My, my instinct is that the answer is no, and that it's actually better to touch, touch the screen directly or just use something that's plugged into the screen. My, that's my like gut reaction for that particular thing. But what do I know? Maybe it's, maybe it's the way of the future. Anyway, given that, so that, I wanna say these, That, that even though they've productized the reactive vision, that's what I'm thinking of. And this, this is, so this is an open source and these are their markers. And I don't actually, I don't know. I couldn't tell you if these, <clears throat> excuse me, these particular markers are their invention or I, I don't know the answer. Um, so this is, this is a platform for making tables like that. And this piece of it is actually just the computer vision part. So my, my, Suspicion is is that this thing, even though it's not a projection table, is using that just by judging by the look of the markers. I, I might be very wrong by that about that, but I think that's what's happening. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like from the bottom. So those are probably fingers, and these are 
those objects because this is made for a, a, a table where you're projecting up and you have a camera pointed up and you have infrared going on. Uh, just computer vision stuff, you know? Uh, but they're not using that part of it. And I guess that's, that's the piece of it that makes me think like, oh, well, that's interesting. Okay, so React Division was that thing. Now, the thing that worries me a little about all of this is it seems to be a thing that's out there in the world, and it seems to be a thing people use, but the software seems a little outdated. Um, and it's an academic project, and like I, sometimes those things worry me a little bit. It is cool that they have this protocol that I think they came up with as well. I might be wrong about that. Yeah, the reactable, yeah. Uh, that is that is about this. It's about talking about these things, but I don't know that I really need that. <clears throat> so, so I guess the summary is is I could. It seems like I could use this, you know, like I could I could potentially use this thing uh, to do the job, or could use some other AR system. So what I've typically used in the past for marker tracking is uh, a solution from a company called Euphoria. But it's, it's, I feel like they've just started, they just charged more and more money all the time. And they've, they've added more features and it's cool and it's interesting and it's neat. Although a fair number of what it does has been kind of absorbed into ARKit and AR Core, So it doesn't seem, as they've charged more money, it kind of seems like it's a less useful thing. But it's not, I feel like they used to have a free tier and they don't. It's like $500 a year seems to be the cheapest to actually like use it out in the world. Thanks little robot, I don't want your help. So this is what I've used in the past. It works well with Unity. It's integrated well with Unity, but yeah, I don't know. And I don't want this to be a mobile thing so I can't use ARKit and AR Core because they only support mobile. So this guy feels like an option. This, uh, this thing, but man, it sure hasn't been updated in a while, it appears. And maybe that's fine, maybe that's because it's robust and good, but it still just feels a little suspicious. Alternatively, there's just, so that's very specifically built for these interactive tables. There's also Air Toolkit, <clears throat> which, is this the one I'm actually talking about? There's also an academic project. Uh, it's from the HitLab. It's, is this the right one? Oh. Okay, well now I don't even Maybe there's uh, maybe there's updates I don't I don't exactly know about. But if you just go to straight up AR toolkit five. Okay, maybe I'm in trouble here. Wow, the last public release was 2004. I did not think that, no, this is stable release, April 2020. And Air Toolkit X is a repository. So maybe it has evolved into this and is still being maintained. Is that what's going on? I see. It's a real max. Is now uh, handling it. I remember that name, and I don't remember why. I want to say it's from a VR headset, but I could be extremely wrong about that. This, this is what happened, we've become this. I see, so until the...
2018 is the last actual release of this. Still seems to be maintained though, right? I mean, people are committing, whatever that's worth, which, you know, you never know. Anyway, I'm curious about this as just an open, maybe it's an option. It's like an open, simple way to do some computer vision. Seventeen-year pedigree. Yeah, another thing we care about, though, is like, what would be nice? It doesn't have to. It'd be kind of nice if there was Unity integration. In fact, I'm not sure. You know, if we had the the standalone camera things, maybe those are just Raspberry Pis that are just doing their own thing, and they don't. We don't actually care. They don't. Maybe they can be ultra simple. In other words, maybe. But uh, this seems a bit dated. It's not a great sign. Unity has come a long way in, in those times. Hmm. Okay, where did we go? We found some docs. Quick start. I mean, part of the thing that would be really nice with the Unity version is I'm just not really set up to build uh, these other things so easily. I guess we could try to get a build environment working well on this machine. I don't want to install Visual Studio. It doesn't seem like a very quick start. These are some examples. You know, this is a weird aside, but a thing that slightly worries me about this is that there's no pictures. Doesn't seem weird for like a fundamentally visual system. Okay, here we go. Great. Some nice marker tracking there. Nice squares. What does NFT mean? Natural Future Tracker. Oh, okay, so that's like actually using an image, I believe. <clears throat> Why is that beta? That's kind of interesting though. That it could, so I, I could imagine doing all the computer vision on Raspberry Pi with a Raspberry Pi camera, and those those that piece of it is just the Raspberry Pi, and it runs, and then it just sends the coordinates out. Like it, it's a very self-contained system. I could see that actually working pretty well, where it just that has that's the job that it does, and it just does that job. Especially if you wanted to make multiples of them, it'd be pretty easy to instantly create several of these little computer vision friends. Is it so much to ask that I just want to like to look at some pictures? Is that is that crazy? Yeah. Or watch some videos or just something? So this this is the normal world in which these things are used. Of course, is like look through a camera. <clears throat> excuse me, look through your phone, look through whatever, and see the marker, and then put something on the marker, which is not what we're asking for. And I, which I think it should be fine. Like I don't think we have to do that thing. tracking how'd you do that I 
Does it do more? I wonder actually. I mean, I had just assumed that it did the markers, but like what else can it do? And it seems to be all about markers, right? Kind of just want to like see some examples before I go through the trouble of setting it up. It would be nice. I looked like Unity two years ago. Enterprise, Vuforia versus Air Toolkit. I'm curious about that. Vuforia has a ton of other high-end features. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much I would care about, really. You can put an airplane on it. Cool gun. How'd you do that? How'd you know you were that far away? <laughs> Lots of very exciting examples. A whole lot of people holding up pictures of things. That's nice. Look at that. <clears throat> so, but all of these are kind of like what is, these applications are all about augmented reality, which is not really what I want. I don't want to augment reality. I just want um, a tangible interface. Air Groove. Graph 2000. Mm. Whoops. <clears throat> oh, oh, academic world. That's, that's kind of something, right? So they've got some kind of little playing field. Presumably there's a camera down there and then they're doing something with this game, with this. There's those fancy markers again though. What are we using here? Serious games for therapy. I'm guessing this means post-traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah, serious games for for the therapy. That looks like post-traumatic children. I know a very tiny amount of German and it's not that useful. A tangible interface for individuals. Gestalten, I don't know. Yeah, you might, my rudimentary German is not helping here. Okay, well, I missed it. What are we actually doing right here? So that's a little check marky friend. Object selection. Hmm. It seems hard. I mean, it seems like a, there's a problem with things like this. They seem hard. This seems harder than just like touch the, touch the screen and touch the house. You know, like it doesn't, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know about this stuff. I think the research is awesome, but as far as like the ap application in the real world, I just don't know. Uh, like if that's a way to use computers, to have stuff in your hands, but you're looking at a screen. I don't, I don't know the answer. 
a magnetic tangible user interface. That's interesting. What is that? Is this, is this working? I don't know. They got some ducks. You can move the duck around. Everybody loves that. I do actually kind of like that. Like to have the physical object and see the virtual correlation, I think is pretty cool. So what are we looking at though? Is this a... Uh, that felt like Feels like they're looking up, right? Looks like they're looking, there must be a camera up here looking up. How do they do that and still get a nice light table effect? Curious about that. <clears throat> I mean, it could be that these things are emitting IR or something that signs through that. Like these could be active devices with batteries or something, but. And you got knobs and dials to turn. Yeah, I wanna see the bottom of one of these. So that's interesting. Uh, that was not very really useful. Magnets. So does this just mean there are, that's interesting, that looks like an RFID, RFID tag to me and a magnet. Seems like that's very positional though. You have to put it in the right place, which is not really what we want. Tangible interfaces hack a day. Oof. Building a tangible interface. Is that like Play-Doh or clay or something wet or pieces of sponge or something? Cause that'll work too for a multi-touch display. Depends on how many fingers the display can support though, you know? Um, because each of these ends up being a finger, basically. You got these nice little things, plant creatures. Well, that wasn't very... Bad job, Nick Magazine. So... Yeah, I, I, I'm, now what I'm starting to get is this feeling. Starting a little bit of a feeling that like, I need to do a broader, kind of a broader inspection of uh, the world of tangible interfaces. I have some knowledge of that stuff and I've done a bit of it, but maybe there are things now that are possible. I mean, even there's just things I wasn't even thinking of. Of uh, like the the Play-Doh things. No, I just opened the images and not the links. Oh no, worthless, worthless. It's all worthless. <clears throat> okay, a couple of those I did, I was actually curious about. Let's find the ones I was curious about again. This one, I was curious about that. This one just looks like little cards that get stuck in.
because there is the object idea, which I'm not, I mean, there's something to that for sure. But like I said before, I don't exactly see how that fits in to the things I've been doing, but maybe there's just some other Uh, experiments in the field that could be interesting. I'm curious about that one. Because you think, like, there's lots of ways to know about an object. There's simple ways to know about an object. There's ways to know that an object is there. We've done that a fair amount with RFID. Um, Yeah, if it's just a totally arbitrary object, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, there's certainly, there's decades of this kind of research, of this kind of tangible interaction. A lot of it looks like there's blocks involved. Whole lot of this stuff. I mean, I think this was, I feel like this just got popular in the uh, kind of academic research world, building these kinds of touch tables. I think like post minority report when everybody thought that that's how you were gonna use computers and moving your hands all over the place, <clears throat> which is not what we do. Mostly we touch things, but we move our hands not all over the place. We move them in a pretty constrained place, I think. Uh, so it's, it's debatable, it's a, it's a generalization. Uh, but I wonder, I wonder what else, I mean, cause I remember, you know, when I, some of the early projects I was doing that were vaguely in this realm, touch just wasn't available everywhere. You know, like you, you, touch at a large scale was like, you just, you couldn't do that easily. Now it's easy enough to just buy a dis multi-touch display. Um, but that was not, certainly not always the case. Okay, we got a whole lot of blocks. We got a whole lot of cylinders. We got a whole lot of fiducial markers. Which I, I find myself feeling a bit resistant to just because there's a lot of things I, uh, I don't like about computer vision in so many ways in which it's pretty flaky. It can do some amazing things and in, in like high-end applications it can certainly do amazing things but um, in the scope of kind of just what a person can make I have found it's often pretty flaky. Everybody loves a good tangible dodecahedron. Whatever this thing is, looks great. And it's funny, based on the title of this uh, stream or this video, I came into this thinking very much like, well, okay, maybe, maybe fiducial markers are a way to go. Maybe tangible interfaces are a way to go. Or computer, sorry, computer vision based tangible interfaces are a way to go. But <clears throat> I'm finding myself mentally drifting away from that a little bit. And the stream does have to be somewhat brief because I do have a call this afternoon. I just don't want to, like, there's been so many of these things made, of these, like, touchy kind of tables that I, I don't want to make one of those just for the sake of making one of those. Like, I, unless it really felt like it served the thing I wanted to do, which is <clears throat> still slightly in flux, but has some, has some broad uh, concepts, certainly, even some not so broad concepts. The authoring of a radial artwork is the, the kind of very short 
very, very short mission statement. But maybe that's all wrong. <clears throat> okay, what have, what have we queued up here? These are kind of cool. I'll admit it. Squishy. Cool. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, no, should have clicked projects, okay. Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design. How do you work, deskmates? I don't think you're what I want, but you're kind of, a, but I want you. Lamps with emotions. Daily stack, sidetrack. Hmm. Physical representations of your task, that's interesting. Getting sidetracked by sidetrack here. the way the flick looks. Golden Levin tangible interface. So we use that CMU here in Pittsburgh. I can't actually tell looking like that if we were uh, looking up or down, but it appears we're projecting down because it looks like there's nothing underneath us. Is that fair to say? Yes, we are being projected upon. So that is looking down and there's computer vision going on, looking down. Well, that's a thing that works. you just link me to Vimeo to tell me about this is the over aggressive hyperlinking. Oh you got a light, you got a camera. You got some markers. You got a box. Huh, that's pretty cool. That's nice. So the duration is based on the rotation and that touchdown. That's well done. That's pretty cool. So this is kind of downward facing. Which is fine. It's just it's easier for your hand to obscure it. And we've got some blocks, so you can just throw the block down. Yeah, reactivision. Okay. And I've seen this one before, it's pretty cool. It's like a record player but as the uh, objects pass under. Pretty simple, but it's, I, think it's, I think it's well done. I mean, just in terms of being a, can we get it, like zoom in? Yeah, there's just these little tracks and you put stuff on them. And as they pass, they will. Maybe 
and we'll play. I like the look of it, I like the design of all of those things. I think, that, I think that's a well done machine. This is also Reactivision. Very exciting sideways camera. Funny, we've seen a lot of examples of this in for audio interfaces or or interfaces like this where you're doing like knobs and dials, but I don't really feel like we've seen much of, oh, maybe this is it. Maybe we finally are seeing it. Just the, the composition of, of visual elements or the control of visual elements, but maybe this is, maybe we're about to see it. recorded this in a bright wood room. Man, this really... This rear projection in a brightly lit room is not, uh... not the greatest. Maybe better in here. Darker in here. So many of those, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe not. I, my assumption is that these are React, Reactivision specific marker designs, but I don't actually know that. This might be an example of I was talking about like multiple touch objects. Curious about what's going on here because these don't look fully passive. How does it know that? I mean, there's magnets. Oh, I thought I saw wires inside there. Maybe the magnets. How does that work? Interesting. These are nice looking objects. What do totems do? Okay. There are just a number of objects that have different, different things. Interesting. These are our blocks. So those seem like they, I mean, those could just be kind of anything. Maybe RFID, but not, no computer vision there. Or they're just, yeah, I wonder, I don't know. Some way, some way it knows what those are. Yeah, it looks like they may be like different blocks <coughs> close different circuits maybe, and that's how they identify them which is interesting. I could see, that's actually kind of cool. If you're gonna put a thing in a place and it's gonna remain fixed in that place, that's a pretty cool way to do it. Is just have them kind of close, close the circuit. That's interesting. Project from the 
ça. Ouais. Kind of confused about how this works. That looks like a projector is inside there. Maybe this is just an, another option for setting it up. So it kind of looks like all that stuff was inside. The projector inside, hits a mirror, bounces up, hits the tabletop. That's what it looks like to me. I just am not very motivated to build something like this, personally. So one side is an actual display and one side is rear projection for this particular machine. It looks like a sad robot that's crying out of one eye in the middle. Or maybe it's got two eyes. Why are you so sad, robot? Because someone plugged into your forehead. Nice work, Johannes. Well, hmm. I lost my motivation very slightly to do any uh, computer vision stuff. I don't actually like them that much. I don't think I like it. I don't think I like that as a uh, interface system that much. Now having an array of objects and doing something with the objects seems kind of cool. Wow, that's funny. I, uh, that's really funny. I worked on a, I worked with a startup company I've never heard of this particular one who had a very, very, very similar vision. Wanted to sell you objects with the same with the same kind of pitch, actually. What a strange thing. Very, very similar pitch. So I'm gonna say this didn't succeed. Cleek, do you still exist? So now we just have like a little NFC, maybe they pivoted. Or now they do uh, the audiobooks. Well, they did it in 2019. They still did something by giving out some objects. But I think it's really just like there's a URL in here. This is, I think it's just what we did a few days ago when we did those, the NFC, whatever that thing is. What was it called? You know, the thing. Uh, it's these beautiful cup coasters. How much they charge for these? Well, maybe they've made it happen. That other company, the one that I mentioned that I worked with, did not make it happen. appears to be up oh, look here we go so really this really just like limited time offer to December 15 2018 uh, click kind of like the word click Is it just NFC? Is that how it works? How can people play my cliques? Scan it with your smartphone camera. Some devices can play with a simple tap. How do you scan it with your 
camera if it's not a QR code. Let's watch the video. How do you work, cliques? So they showed the tap, they didn't show the camera. I have to imagine the camera would have to. Is that a QR code? I don't know. Interesting. I do. Okay, that's pretty cool. Like uncapping things, uncorking. It's pretty good. That I like. <clears throat> What's that thing? I want that thing. The stream has just turned into me looking at the internet again. Um, well, here we are. We're doing a, <laughs> kind of a survey of tangible interfaces accidentally. Because I kind of thought I knew what I wanted, but now I think I, I don't. It's story of my life lately. Maybe I just need to think about it more. So I feel confident we could do the computer vision thing. We could do it. It's clearly been done a lot. People can do it. Uh, I kind of wish there was a way to do the orientation. There, there probably is, but I really thought about it. Like, if you had an object and you, you, you know, again, if you just want to know if an object's there, RFID is a real easy way to do that. But it doesn't tell you anything about orientation. So it'd be cool if there was a way that was pretty easy to do the orientation thing without needing uh, computer vision. Because then it needs to be lit, there needs to be space, there needs to be a camera, is your hand over it, whatever, like, I, it would be cool if that wasn't a requirement. And I guess I can think of ways to do it with like closing a circuit somehow and having a bunch of sort of leads or like exposed pads or something. So as you turn something, but that doesn't really seem like the wisest approach. So maybe there's just some Yeah, I don't know, because really at the end of the day, it's like, just make a knob. Like, if you want to do that and you want to turn a thing, if you care about having a thing that's in one place and you can turn it, just make a knob to, to do that thing. I like that little glowing uh, hemisphere, whatever that is, seems good. That's a beautiful object. Look at that object. I do like beautiful objects. Is this real? Is this actually a real thing? I want to get into... Part of what makes it so beautiful is the colors, though. And that, that makes it not super easy. You can get nice colors of vinyl, I guess, but the nice colors of the actual objects. A little complicated. Calm interfaces. I just thought of really silly way to do rotation. I don't think it, I like it actually. You just have like a ring of photocells and then a hole in the thing and as you turn it, it exposes light on different parts. Um, I don't think that's a great idea. It's an idea, but I don't think it's a good idea. Lots of sequences, this one actually looks like that. I wouldn't be surprised if those were just photo cells. Photo cells are real cheap and real easy. Um, <clears throat> so that would not that would not surprise me if that's how that was done. The school of form team. It's a cool 
Where's the school of form? I want to go to the school of form. These I are reflective sensors. A different grayscale color and intensity of reflected light. The bottom of our disk. That's interesting. That's an interesting idea. So you could imagine having a gradient of uh, kind of a circular gradient kind of pattern that as you turned over an IR sensor. So there's there's like black and white, and there must be IR sensors that can, uh, well, bounce off and know that. But you can sort of imagine that being a gradient and getting a precise value. That's interesting. Where is the school of form? No. In Poland. Cool. How does this work? <clears throat> so these appear to be some kind of little pads and, and circuits are closed by the, is that a liquid? Programmable droplets. Hmm. Okay. Look at that thing. Oh my gosh. Mirror rack modules. I just can't get into, I can't do it. I can't get into, oh my, look at it though. I love it. It's so beautiful. It's just beautiful. The form is beautiful. The colors are beautiful. Is that a little screen? Man. I love this thing. Look at this thing. Is this a 3D render? Is this what this really looks like? Musical interface or instrument design. There's some, some pretty spectacular things. Beautiful, beautiful, weird objects. Okay, we're getting very distracted. Uh, let's get distracted just for a little bit more though, because I want to I wanna see this, because that, that is a gorgeous object. Like, if I wanted to make this object, if I was just a person that was like, let's make this object, how would I decide to do that? I would be at the mercy of, that's a cool website, but, well, it loses its charm in black and white. You know, I could say like, well, I could get some kind of plastic or material. Hopefully that's not plastic. Maybe it's metal, but, or it could be plastic. Some kind of material and I could laser cut it and I could get that shape. So that would be a thing that I could do pretty easily. These color pieces could be vinyl. There'd be some like really delicate elements there. Like these really delicate elements would be hard with vinyl. That would be something more like, I don't know like paint, like with something done with a mask or like a screen, a silk screeny kind of thing. I don't know. Or you need some way to print directly to the material. The custom colored knobs is like, I don't know what you do there. You buy knobs off the shelf and maybe there's like a supplier in China that will let you uh, pick very specific colors and will make them for you in that way. Or you try to like cast them yourself and then they look like weird blobs and they don't look very nice. I guess that could kind of work. You could see that working. If you were very good at uh, like mold making and casting and all of that stuff that I'm not super good at. I've done a little bit of it, but I'm not super good at it. You could probably make those things happen. 
Like that's that's pretty fine detail though. But you could you could probably do it. Now mixing your like medium, your 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 casting medium, and getting the color so it perfectly matched that stuff. Gosh, it's challenging. I mean, I assume this thing costs a lot. <clears throat> Not found. $369. Yeah. It's not an inexpensive. I don't even know what it does, actually. So it's a four voice polyphonic controller. I don't even care what it does. I love the way it looks so much. I would love to just make objects like this. Like if I could just... Okay, well, I guess there's some other options, but they don't sound very good. You could 3D print some of these pieces, but then they would look 3D printed. And maybe you could find PLA, you could find like 3D extrusion material that were in, it was in colors that you liked, but it just wouldn't look this good. It would not even be close. Um, and like casting these, I guess it's a possibility. I don't know, man. What what a beautiful thing. I love, like these buttons, the way they're, yeah. It's a really nice looking object. Can I just make weird objects all day? Is that a thing? Can that be my future? Is like making, trying to make beautiful objects that don't do anything? Because if they do something, it's, I think you gotta do a lot of work to make them actually do something. That doesn't sound very good. I love this thing. I feel like I need a new Pinterest board just called, I love this thing. call it fabrication maybe who knows i don't have a reason i just i just love it okay this seems useless but it seems like kind of in that same realm that we've been looking at Will you look at all the things no how do you work sensor do you just know if a thing is there that would be my suspicion can you translate it I am weak for RFID. Yeah, it seems like just RFID. I like it. I like these objects, but you don't, again, this is just a situation of, is a thing there or is it not there? That's all we really learned from this. I don't know what these things are, but I love them as well. Oh, that's pretty cool. Little little weather. Oh my gosh, look at these! Oh. This is suddenly, like, bringing tears to my eyes. Like, beautiful objects are, like, suddenly... Oh, of course it's teenage engineering. So, of course, they're a trillion dollars. Interesting, 3D printables for IKEA speakers. That's cool. That's pretty freaking cool, if that's true. That's actually a great idea, is uh, use off-the-shelf objects that already do the thing you want to do, and then uh, dress them up and make them look cooler. Maybe this is my future. Maybe I'm done with screens. Kind of over. At the, at right this minute, where I am, me sitting here, uh, I'm a little bit over designing for screens. Those feelings come and go, certainly. And sometimes they can come and go with great frequency. But, uh, these heat sinks, what are these? Objects are cool. Do I need to just have a sit and a think about, uh... that's my problem. I sit and think too much, too much thinking. 
I, gotta th I need to think less, probably. But sound, you know, I have a history of... Not a huge history. But of, like, kind of strange objects, I think. Like, these are some objects. Those are those are okay objects. I'm not totally pleased with the, the way the base looks there, but I think these are pretty good objects. This is an object. It doesn't do anything. It's just an object. Some objects. Some objects. Yeah. Maybe I haven't enough. Maybe I haven't made enough objects. That's that's the problem because I've been nomadic. Largely nomadic for a lot of years and didn't really have a place to make objects. Uh, speculative design. This is. That's creeping me out a little bit. Okay, but this is. That would be a big change. It would be a pretty big change to. It would be a tremendously huge change to say uh, that I'm not doing a. visual art piece at all and that I'm doing a non a non-visual artwork and instead I'm doing a uh, oh, speculative design is that the whole thing that I need to do is just all speculative design yeah moving <laughs> I stopped mid thought there because I keep getting entranced by things I'm looking at sorry uh, moving from a screen based experience to some other kind of experience to some other tangible audio experience, maybe? Which is the thing I've definitely done in the past. Uh, there's something that feels good about that. Look at that thing, why? Why did you do that? I don't know, but I just am glad you did it. What if I got really into... Ah, oh, look at that thing. This, yeah, she... This person made a gun that shoots her uh, tears, which I love it. I don't know. I'm having one of those things that's like a uh, a minor. What what feels like a really like strong insight, like a really intense insight, but you never know if it's just like in 20 minutes I'll be like, what what am I doing? What was I even thinking? It is not time for my call yet. I have more time to stare at things on the internet. This is a weird stream. The watch me stare at things on the internet stream, but. Uh, That's what this has turned into. Okay, let's just try to get through the things we looked at. I love, I don't know if this is real. Kind of seems like it isn't. I hope it is. This is like a beautiful theremin. Cool, cool. I mean, my my fixation with uh, complicated control panels is well documented. Not as documented as it should be, though. We we started down that route and then didn't do it. We didn't actually do the thing. So we need to actually do the thing one day. Is Spend a long time cutting a whole bunch of vinyl, I think, and uh, make a fancy control panel. Feels like it could just be cry cut and then uh, cricket, whatever that is. Maybe that could be on top of copper pads. I don't know exactly. If it isn't abundantly clear, I don't know uh, anything.
That's nice. Cool. Very cool. How did you work? Okay, so this is actually, this is the thing I was saying we, we hadn't really seen, which was uh, using this to kind of create a visual art exper experience. So this is, this is an example of that, of using these tangible, some kind of tangible object to create a visual art experience, which is very nice. That's great. Nice work. Very good work. Sometimes I look at people's work and it is just... That's funny. I tried to do something like this long ago. Um, and I did not do it very well. <laughs> like, like, I, I can't tell if they're holding a projector or if the projector is just tracking the light and then projecting where they're, they're pointed. I don't know. I wish this person documented their, the tech a little more. This is great work. Sometimes I look at work like this and I'm simultaneously like just so amazed at what people accomplish and then also like so discouraged. Where it's like, oh man, a lot of people make such good stuff. So that was done at Parsons. Cool, nice work. Oh yeah, weird objects. I've been thinking, you know, I turned 40 not long ago. I was diagnosed with some health problems not long ago. And so I have to sort of figure out my life and what my life is gonna be going forward. And I think it might be just making objects. There's just, there's definitely an appeal there. Look at these little friends. What are these friends? Carpet critters, adorable. What do they do? Do they do anything or do they just look adorable? This does remind me for an idea of a project I had long ago that if I did decided, did decided, if I did decide to just right now, like, okay, do a, do a kind of speculative, tangible design project. What I would do is uh, this idea I've had for a long time called faux bots, which are uh, robots with very specific fears. What are you? What are we doing here? Are we like drawing a yoga mat? Oh. That's cool. Nice looking, nice looking object. Does this also play music? It appears to also play music. Cool. Oh my gosh, look at those lamps. Look at this beautiful thing. Paper speakers. Like a, a paper speaker is not necessarily that exciting of a thing or that remarkable of a thing, but this presentation of it is gorgeous. It's a very, really lovely, really nice work, really interesting work, sort of combining the, uh, you know, like these, these little design elements for the components, of which there's very few. It looks very simple. That's very nice work. Cool. Good job, everybody. Everybody's doing great work. Um, <clears throat> this one is interesting. This is another, so I, okay. One is interesting because it's radial. And of course I'm fixated on radial at the moment. Uh, I feel like this would be better. Okay, I don't like, ugh, I don't know if I like those. Uh, I don't know if I like those parts of it. I'm curious, I'm curious about the beat. Is it really just like some kind of radial step sequencer sort of thing? Oh, that just gave me an idea that I'm kind of surprised I've never had before.
Like it could just be a, a like a rotary, like <clears throat> excuse me, basically a step sequencer, where it, it that's kind of what I imagine it is, that it just steps around these one at a time. But it just give me an idea for like a polar coordinate based. I mean, that's kind of what this would be, sort of. But uh, I mean, that's what this would be, I guess, is you would have an angle and you'd have a radius. But I was thinking of moving it outwards instead of around the circle, which is what I assume this does. Uh, that's cool. I this is You did a poor job here, though. Why don't you link to a video? OK. My buddy Felix. Now this thing seems nice. Yeah. This is a step sequencer. Hey, I love step sequencers. Gross, what are you doing there? Don't touch that. Gross. <clears throat> yeah, so it's cool, but it is, it's a, it's a step sequencer at, at its core. Kind of hoping it'd be something like a little more abnormal than that. Look at these beautiful objects. Look at these objects. <clears throat> Do I need to go to the Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design? So I just go get another degree? Do I get a doctorate somewhere that involves making objects? Beautifully done. It's very beautiful. I wonder if this really is the same thing. Like, was this, because <clears throat> this looks like a laser cut enclosure. Very curious how the uh, is that really just a beautifully nicely? <clears throat> Did you really make a laser cut enclosure look that good? I guess so. I'd love to see them painting it. I mean, I guess that is that like Bondo? Are they Bondoing it here? Maybe it's time to go back to school. It's time to go into. Uh... I gotta stop going to school. I gotta stop getting degrees unless somebody pays for them. That's a pretty thing, but it doesn't look real. What's the problem? You could just make fake beautiful things all day. But then you're just, oh, you're just in front of the computer all the time. I don't want to do that anymore. Oh, those look interesting. What's going on with these? Projection going down, a projection going forward. And then what are we doing? Wow, cool Frisbee technology. I don't know what this is, but it looks cool. Everybody's out there doing great stuff. Look at all this great stuff everybody's doing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't know what this is, but just just look at it. Are these real? I 
I'm gonna say no. I'm say they're not real. I'm interested in uh, real things today. Love this, love the colors of the compositions. Oof, oof. That's really nice. That almost is to get like <clears throat> interesting. I assume these are just laser cut. How'd you do the borders? But it, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just 3D renders. Who can say? I can't tell anything. Who knows if anything's real anymore? Especially when it looks when it's stuff that looks like that. Are you real? Who knows? Who knows if you're real? I think this is real. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Look at all these things. They're all nice. I like these materials. I like the way this stuff looks. This is not... I don't think any of this is helping me. Is it? <laughs> I don't know if any of this is helping me before. These are great. Very nice. I was just up here and, and I've done nothing. I just looked at the internet the entire time. It was, it's one of those streams. It just happens sometimes, I guess, where I just have to look at the internet for a while. That looks cool. I like all these things are just buttons. That's a beautiful object. Oh, man. Okay. Look at this thing. Okay, so this this is, seems to be very clearly a 3D printed enclosure. How'd they make this? Oh, you know what? I know a trick for that. I just remembered. I don't think that's what's done here. But there is a way, yeah, hmm, interesting. There's a way to do that kind of thing where you, it's almost like a uh, deboss. You, you kind of etch things into a material with a laser, and then you go in and you kind of fill it with, uh, with something. You fill it with some medium to make it whatever color you want it to be. Okay, is it? I probably need to stop, right? I don't even know. Virtual sushi. I, I think I saw this project once and I think it was actually pretty cool. Where these individual pieces corresponded to individual like 3D uh, manipulations. How do they work? This is, does not seem like a good description of how these work. So those look like 3D printed objects. These are what I was thinking of. <clears throat> That's nice. Just put that on your nose and everything's great. Henry. There you go, great. I mean, I'm all for dials, knobs and dials, both, in fact.
Very excited. Oh man, IOT. That's a word. It's out there. I can't escape it anymore. This is the last thing we're looking at. This is it. Last thing. <clears throat> what is it? Is this some touch sensitive circle? Black button circle. This is real. It kind of doesn't appear to be real. Maybe it's real. Okay, well... I have a call soon, so let's stop. That was a weird stream, I know, I apologize. But not that much, I don't apologize that much. It's just one of those times that we just look at the internet the whole time. So, what are my takeaways at the moment? One is maybe I just want to give up everything and just make small strange objects. Maybe that's the, maybe that's what's, what my future holds for me. Some career in a small, but definitely useless object making. Only, only useless. Um, <clears throat> so the computer vision stuff seems like a thing we could do. The exact tools are feel a little questionable. Like what would we want to use? Maybe we do use AR Toolkit X. I, I don't know. We could certainly prototype it with anything. We could prototype it with Euphoria if we wanted to. The problem is, is even given that, like that idea of like, okay, we're gonna have a tangible interface, like how do we turn that into the thing we've been trying to do? Like how how does that work exactly? Um, and I don't, I don't have a great answer. I really don't. So I just need to stew on that a little bit. Also think about some of the other kinds of interfaces we saw, because there were some interesting things in there. There was like capacitive, sorry, headphones. Uh, those capacitive, fake capacitive touch objects were pretty cool. Um, we saw various other things with magnets and various kinds of electrodes with circuit paths to get closed and on and on and on. So there's some interesting things to look at. Uh, <clears throat> but I don't know. I don't know, man. I just got to think some more. So tomorrow we'll do like some kind of review of the project and talk about the next steps because the next steps are, are a little weird. And then uh, just go from there, perhaps. So uh, thanks for hanging out and have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye.